episode 33. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See, hi, guys. <laughs> We're on episode 33. <laughs> the last episode was 32. So welcome back to Behind the Bikini. Um, we are here live ourselves, not for you watching, but that's okay. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Ask all the questions in the comments that you want us to address for you. We've been getting a ton of those in, so that's fantastic. Keep those up. Um, keep up the interaction, the sharing, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it is episode 33, and this week we are going to talk about comparison being the thief of joy. But in this sport, it's all about comparison. So we're going to kind of dive into that a little bit, um, talk about what the judges are actually looking at in comparison. So maybe it'll, it'll kind of open that up for you a little bit and you can see it a little bit better. So when you're actually seeing why somebody's placed somewhere, you, you know why. Um, so before we get into all that, how have you been, Miss Birthday Girl? Oh, good. Just another day in the life. Thanks for another asking. Day in the life. Doing good, doing good. Did you do anything fun? So I, I was watching your story. So did you do anything fun this weekend for your birthday? I saw the pickleball match. No, no. We've just been hanging out. Yesterday was a normal work day. So yeah. Nothing, nothing crazy. Boring's but birthdays are boring when you get older. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, but you remember how old you are now, so there's. Yeah, that. I do remember how old I am now after <laughs> after some Google searching. That's for sure. Thirty two. <laughs> Isn't that funny? We were talking about it last week. But then going back to, um, you know, this past weekend with Charlotte, and I had my my girl Karen that got on stage, and she's yeah, 62. congratulations. Yeah, yeah, she's sixty two, almost sixty three. So you know, when we were talking, we we're talking about birthdays. She's going to be sixty three in, in October. I was like, you're not almost sixty three. I was like, if that's the case, I'm almost forty three. I was like, because my birthday is in se September, so you're not almost sixty three. She, she was like, well, thanks for just reminding me that you can be my daughter, but thank you. <laughs> like, she looked great. I wrote, on, I wrote on your post, maybe we all age like Karen. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable she her this is her line so she she said this is the first ccts that she came to she got on stage she goes she goes black don't crack but it sure can get fat <laughs> so she's she it cracks me up she's That's short cute. and so whenever she puts on her weight in her off season it all goes to her legs and she like the the quote she always says from me we were doing a posing set posing session one time and she goes I said, I was like, you're looking like a whole lot of wellness right now because her legs were so thick. I mean, you can imagine even on stage now, she's, um, she's lower body dominant. You know what I mean? So yeah, she's um, dense. Yeah. 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 And she's, but that helps her at her age, you know, in this, in this sport, she's got ridiculous glutes. She's got better glutes than me and she's 20 years older than me. <laughs> I was gonna, yeah. I mean, if, if God, if we're that dense at that age, whew. I know. I know. So and she's come a long way as far as her presentation, but also just improving her upper body too. So I love talking about her too, because again, she's on the older age, age range of competitors in general. So just being able to see what she's been able to do and to change her physique and all those kinds of things. It's been really, it's been really cool to watch her. Um, just yeah. to watch her Literally the definition of age is just a number. I love when the girls, you know, they write Absolutely. in, they're like thirties or early forties and they're like, am I too old? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no, not at all. It, it's like, again, when you're in your mid thirties, you're like in your prime right yeah. there for the sport. Like you got the muscle maturity, you still young, look young in the face, all those kinds of things. Your, your thirties are your, are your, your hip point. That's where I you love my thirties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I turned 30, everybody, I was kind of having a freak out. Everybody's like, you're going to love your thirties. And yeah. I, I do. I love my thirties for sure. Well, I was laughing too, because once um, we figured out what your age was and everything too, you are ex almost exactly a month older than my little brother. So. Really? <laughs> like, like, oh, you're like my baby brother's age. <laughs> second, I'm a second sibling now. I'm a little I sister. Know, I know. Well, you guys are so different too. It makes me laugh because like he still lives at home with my parents. So <laughs> like, yeah, so, that's a whole yeah. other story. That's as, soon a whole as, I could, story. as soon as I could get out of my parents' house, I was gone. She gone. Me too. <laughs> me too. Same. As soon as I was out of high school, I'm like, bye. I'll come back for the bye. summer and say hello, but I'm still not going to be here, really. <laughs> so exactly. My dad didn't call me on my birthday yesterday. I had to call him because he was like, I know what you do on your birthday. You shut your phone off. Oh, I I'm that's like, funny. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. I don't like to talk on the phone on my birthday. So I had to call him and I was like, okay, I'm willing to talk today. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had one year, this was years ago. My parents forgot to call me on my birthday and I never let them forget that. <laughs> I never let them forget that. Uh, I'm like, yeah. you're going to call me, you're going to text me, you're going to do something, you know, because it, it is your, your oldest daughter's birthday. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> it's it's funny. I didn't hear from my best friend all day. My phone was on do not disturb. And I just was wheeling like, when was the last time I talked to her? Did I say something? Is she pissed at me? 
So she she sent me a text like at like six o'clock last night. It was something stupid. And um, she was like, I hope you enjoyed your song. And I was like, song? She's like, dude, have you checked your voicemails? She literally called me first thing in the morning, but it was on D and D, so I didn't oh. get it. And there was she literally sang to me, and here I am wielding all day that I hadn't heard from her, and like, oh. once her, and she was literally she was one of the first ones to call me yesterday morning and leave me a voicemail. And if I just checked my voicemails, I would have known that. But it was funny. I literally never check my voicemail, so I would have even if I had my phone <laughs> on, I wouldn't have checked it. Right. <laughs> like, I have to because the chat, yeah. But. Yeah, I, I'm like people send send me voice notes and text messages and on Instagram and stuff like that. That's cool. I, I check those. I just yeah, never actually check my phone voicemail, voicemail. ever. Yeah. That's how <laughs> like, and then people will text me, "Hey, Drew's voicemail's full," and I'm like, oh. "So I have to go into his phone and delete all of them." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, I literally can't remember the last time I looked at my voicemail. I really don't. Yeah. Like, I have this feature on my phone too, where if they're not in my contacts, it automatically goes to voicemail. Oh, so I like that. It's fantastic because I didn't spam, know that's a thing. Oof, yeah, yeah. It's I think it's for AT and T, but um, cool. But yeah, it's like so. There, if I don't have them saved, I won't get interrupted or whatever right. I'm doing, which is That's great. Awesome. So, but again, I don't pay attention to my voicemails, which I probably should because I probably yeah, just... <laughs> yeah. The spam <laughs> calls are just terrible nowadays. Terrible. I mean, I was Horrible. working next to Drew the other day, and like literally the same call called him three times in an hour. Yeah, and he just yeah. kept blocking it and just kept finding like one digit off and kept calling. It's like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why? Why are you doing? Well, that? I don't know about you, but like Dan does all of my marketing, all my website stuff, and really like that. So he's always on all these random lists for for stuff, for apps, yeah. or whatever the hell. You know what I mean? And, and that's how they get your number. my number in there because it's my business. Yeah. So I get so much bullshit. I'm like, exactly. oh, no, 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 yeah. just so much. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. Where you're like, is this a real number? Is it? You know. But yeah, 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 that's why. And again, I, at this point, I don't have to worry about it. Then I just call them back. So if, if right. it's important, I'll call them back. <laughs> See, and I feel like if they leave me a voicemail, then it then it's important, yes. and I'll call them back. But well, and usually what people will do too is that if they've just left me a voicemail, they'll send me a text message too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always do that too. If I if I get somebody's voicemail, I don't leave a voicemail. I text. It's, pro- it's probably better. They'll probably see the text versus the voicemail. Well, that's what I think. I mean, that's how I do it. I mean, that's how I do it. So I, if you're if you text me, I'm going to see that. I don't right. I don't see all my voicemails. So I just go based on what I do. So maybe other people don't do that, but I, that's what I do. So. No, I think you're I think you're right. I think a lot of people don't listen to their voicemails anymore. Yeah. It's more, mostly yeah. text and email yeah. and yeah. I can't even like the only time I actually use my phone to call people is like when I'm doing consults and I'm doing posing sessions. Mm-hmm. That's it. Every other time, it's like even even talking to people, voice notes. Yeah, like I, 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 even that. So yep. talk to text. Yep. Yeah, I'm like I just you know when I'm checking in like on trainerize even with my clients and stuff, I'll do that that little voice memo now too, which is fantastic because sometimes you check in with people and they can't read inflection. You know what I yeah. mean? They can't tell what you're saying. So yeah. a lot of times I'll just speak into it so they can hear my actual voice. You know what That's, I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I only don't like that because I am so like. I'm, I'm, my memory's terrible. So like, I love having everything written in the trailer. Yes. I always go back and read it. Like, Oh, we talked about that. What did we say? Blah, blah, blah. But I use the the voice memo, like you're saying. So like, if we're talking about something that's maybe a little bit more personal or emotional, then they can like hear my voice yes. behind it. Or I, just, I usually get on a call with somebody and I'm like, Hey, just wanted to talk to you five, 10 minutes, you know, just yep. so they could hear my voice and my emotion behind it. <laughs> yep. And I use that voice memo a lot when I'm critiquing like poses and stuff as well, when they send in their, their progress pictures, because it's a whole lot easier to talk that out than it is to type that out. <laughs> yeah. like, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. So I'll do that. And I'll do, and I'll make like little videos and send them little videos and stuff in there too, because you just can't, you can't type that stuff. It's a whole other language. You know what I mean? Yeah. So posing coaching here. online, it's a very uh, delicate process of understanding yeah. the client, how they learn. And then, yeah. you know, having 10 ways to say the same cue that you want, because not one way works for everybody. It's, it's a very fine line and patience. You know, yes. you've got to be patient because when you're not able to touch them and show them and yes. it's whew, take a breath. So I do the same thing with, as you, like, sometimes I'll be like, pause, I'll hang up with them, take a video of me doing it, send it back. Yep. And they're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden it clicks or whatever yeah. it might be. Because, yeah, I mean, I went to school for education. So it's one of those things you learn, people learn in different modalities. So you have to try every one of those to figure out how they're going to learn the best. And I have some clients that they'll drive two hours to come see me on a Saturday or something like that, just because they want to have that in person, like the move you touch you and all this kind yeah. of stuff. So I totally get that. And like, and I tell people too, like I have a client that, that lives down in um, Georgia 
And while we do our posing and stuff, you know, Steve Payne has his um, group classes down there. I think every Saturday or something like that, he does them. So you get to go up on the stage and you go and you do your, your routine or do your comparisons. He doesn't really give people critiques, which is good because then they don't change anything. But then it's just a matter of they get to do it on a stage in, in that kind of environment versus doing it at home. So I tell my girls all the time, I'm like, yeah, absolutely go. You know, get up there, get get the feel for it so that you're comfortable with that. You know, you'll see all those things and record it so I can see it so we can see what is working and what is not once you actually get into that environment. You know, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of getting in front of um, not even just getting in front of people that are going to critique you, but just getting in front of people, period. Yeah, posing. there's a completely different, you know, posing in front of your phone or in a yeah. you know, room versus people, even if it's other competitors or judges or whatever. Um, yeah. I also, too, love like the night before for check-ins if we're able to get on the stage and walk the stage a little yes. bit because a lot of these stages have like buckling's or you know where the seats they're meeting and you feel all of those things before you actually step on stage on Saturday so um I've been taking my heels to you know check-ins later mm -hmm. on last year and now I'm encouraging my girls to bring in the check-ins and not always is the promoter going to let you step on stage but yeah. for, for you know I know Joe Peshkula does in the class championship series so I always tell the girls to bring the heels we go walk the stage we run through it a couple times just to feel it and yep. uh, make them feel a lot better you know it's one yeah, thing to feel the stage yeah and I've, I've never had an issue with promoters telling me no the only time that you can't walk the stage is if they're setting up or something right you know what I mean that's really it because at the end of the day the promoters want you to, to be able to feel the stage too they want you to feel comfortable and everything some of them are doing you know dress rehearsals I saw that for I think for girl power they're doing that that kind of thing so it's important I mean like I've talked about that before, like with, with Japan, like we were backstage and it was a whole different kind of setup for a stage that I've actually never been on before. Yeah. And we just had to wing it when we went out there. That was a long ass walk from the back of the stage to the box, let me tell you. But you just had to just had to go with it. It would have been nice if I could have walked that ahead of time. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So. For throwing that together. That was a pretty damn cool <laughs> posing routine. Oh, thank you. I yeah. was like, I was like one of those things. It's like you're standing backstage and you're watching the monitors and you're watching what the girls are doing ahead of you and just being like, okay, I think I, think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, God bless the girl that goes first, right? <laughs> well, that was the other thing too. So I, I think they've had that set up several times. So I've seen videos of them doing that setup before. So the same Betty, all that kind of thing. So I think there were a few girls that were at the beginning that have done that stage before. So oh, yeah. thank God they were at the beginning and I'm like, okay, I can watch what they're going to do because they already knew, you know, they went out and acted as if they knew what they were doing. I, there's no freaking way I would have. <laughs> you know? No, but you, no. but you practice posing enough that you're, yeah. you're a chameleon. Like you can right. easily adapt Adjust. and you would know if you, you know, had a hiccup on something, but to us, it would look like you've practiced it a hundred times. And that's, right. you know, goes to show how much posing practice you do. And obviously you do posing coaching for a living, um, yeah. but other girls or other newer pros, they would have been like, that. Yeah. <laughs> so this was not part of my routine, or, 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 you know, <laughs> short, short circuit. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh my gosh. This is like, so, um, Angela, she always makes me laugh. Angela Rosselli, she Rosselli. won the, the 50 and over this past weekend too. Every time we get on a posing session, she's like, so I decided I'm going to do this. And she just completely changed her whole routine. I'm like, Angela, I was like, we decided we were going to do something different last week. Why are you doing this? She's like, well, just because I thought that was boring. I'm like, yeah, but you're comfortable doing that. <laughs> Why did she, she makes me laugh. It's like every time we get on a posing session, she's doing a different routine, a different transition. I'm like, okay. That, I'm like, <laughs> I, I mean, I get the girl's credit. I do not thrive there. Like, I'm Me like, either. Me either. I'm like, I want this to be exact. You know what yeah. I mean? Like. Uh, I mean, this morning, like I checked in with Jamie and I sent in my routines. I've been tweaking my routine. I tweaked it with a little hair flip thing because I didn't like how I was turning over my shoulder. So I was like, okay. And I was, I like the tweak, but it just looks so uncomfortable because I did it for the first time this morning when I did my check-ins. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, it'll get better once I practice it, but there's no way I would just go on stage and do that. There's no yeah. way. It's funny. Oh Literally after this, I'm heading to Jamie's and we're just going to start building my routine this morning. So <laughs> nice. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I was like, so the, when after, cause after Charlotte, so long story short, we'll go into this with the, with um, questions later, but there were some things with bikini bottoms and stuff. So when I got home from Charlotte, I, my brain was going like this, the engineer in my, in my brain, <laughs> I started reworking all of my bikini bottoms and like how they're all put together and everything. So this morning I did a new, I had a whole new suit on and I'm like, <laughs> made a new suit yesterday because so I was like I'm gonna make a new suit and I'm gonna fix all these little things I'm gonna change the ratios here and I'm gonna change the tension here and I'm gonna <laughs> so, but like, that's not, actually really good I'm actually yeah. really really happy with it yes good. so because the, the issue we might as well just talk about this this is actually a question that came in about bikini bottom um 
placement connector. So we'll just go with this. So this was the question. She asked about bottom connector placements. So the issue with bikini bottoms right now, and this is across the board, but mostly in wellness, is that a lot of them are not fitting properly. Um, uh, the, they're, a lot of girls are getting them when they're a little bit bigger. Um, so once they, by the time they get to stage, it's gaping, gapping, not really fitting them properly, those kinds of things. Um, too low in the front, um, showing too much in the back, things like that. So this was a big, big thing this past weekend at the show. Um, so, you know, I just started kind of reworking a few things and changing. I made the tension on the elastic a little bit tighter so that that way, even when you get lean, my, my suit bottoms are adjustable anyway, but if you don't pull them super tight, then they're going to, they're going to gape a little bit. you got to pull them tight. So I was like, well, if I adjust the tension on the, on the elastic, that's going to make them sit tight up against you. So that no matter where you move or how you twist or how you turn, it's not going to move. So now, I would say tension in the, in the elastic in the back or in the front, the front. Okay. the front, the front. So, and the back too, but the front is the problem. The front is where we're seeing issues mostly on stage. Are um, you talking about when girls like hit their front pose and it kind mm -hmm. of baggies out a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, and across the board, I mean, I see it, I see it at shows all the time. I see it all. And the, the photographers are sitting there and they see more than anybody else. You know what I mean? Right. So that's what a lot of people don't realize. It's like, you think you're okay. They see everything, right? They see it all. Um, so we want to err on the side of caution. And like I said, the tension on the elastic, I've just made it, made it tighter now. So now that it's tighter, no matter how you sit that on you, it's not going to gape open. Right. Because that's where I think a lot of the issues coming from is as you as you lean down, that 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 elastic just isn't tight enough and it just starts to get a little bit loose. And because it gets a little bit loose, you start seeing bagging, right? Um, and no matter how tight you pull the back straps, that's how mine are my, the adjustable in the back straps. No how no more no matter how much you pull the back straps tighter, the front is still gonna be loose if you're losing weight. So now um, let me ask you a question. When you are doing a suit consult with someone and they're giving you final measurements. What mm -hmm. I've seen in the past is the girls just don't know how to measure themselves. They're assuming where the high hip is, or they're assuming where they should be measuring. Where should they be measuring for the bottoms when you're asking for those questions? So I do mine a little bit differently than most people. I have the girls when they measure, I have them send me pictures and video of them measuring themselves. So I can see where they're actually putting the measuring tape. Because what I found when I first started doing all of this stuff is you're right. They would always do it wrong. And if I don't have a visual to back it up, I don't know where they actually sat everything. Okay. I had one girl, I had one girl that sent me for her measurements and half of them were in inches and half of them were in centimeters. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I got to put this together. <laughs> like, how do I do that? So I literally have them take photos and take videos of themselves, putting the measuring tape on them. So I know okay. where it's sitting. Okay. Um, and usually, you know, usually that, that, that's very helpful. now some girls, the hard part about it is if you are already relatively close to your stage weight when we take measurements, which is eight weeks out, you're probably going to be okay. But there's a lot of girls that, that aren't, you know, there's a lot of girls that still need to drop quite a bit and do drop quite a bit. And when they do, that's when we got to tighten everything. Right. So the backs of my hip straps uh, on the, on the bikinis, all of them, all of them can uh, tighten. So do the figure bottoms, all of the bottoms that I make, they all tighten. So you can tighten them even on show day if you need to. I had to do that from Hawaii to Japan. So I dropped the six pounds. So I had to go a, a, a slot tighter um, in Japan. But what they don't realize is that they got to pull up on the front too. Right. So they got to pull up and tight on the front. And a lot of times they don't do that. Mm -hmm. If I catch them ahead of time. Yeah. I'll have them do it. And it's no problem, but you know, you got to watch that front of your bikini bottom more than anything else. More yeah. Than anything else, you got to watch the front. So, yeah. and if you're not sure bikini bite it, you can bikini bite it in place. So that way it's not going to gape open or gap open when you move. Right. Yeah. So if you're, if you're not sure when in doubt bikini bite, yep. you know, Yep. Uh, and always have bobby pins on you too, because like, this is something that's so crucial that we try to do with the girls when they're coming in and checking in with us. Like we have the stage lights in the room. So we're getting that bright light on them so we could see hair, where their suit's fitting, make sure that everything's mm -hmm. in where it's supposed to. Um, but there's a lot of times where we have to pull out a bobby pin and, you know, make it scrunch a little bit more yes. or out safety a scrunch. Or, yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. And just mm -hmm. and literally safety pins are like, king on stage day. so just put a few in your bag and just have them with you and you know if somebody says hey you need to do this or they need that then you just have that available That's right. and also if you don't have a backup suit if you've only you know you only have one suit you can only afford one suit something happens to the suit 
safety pins are going to help as yes. well. So if you don't have a backup suit, always make sure that you at least have safety pins on you just in case. Yep. And then the other thing that I tell girls too is the connectors. So have um, clear fishing line because connectors break and it can just happen like that. Yeah. And uh, if you if you have the clear fishing line, I have a few girls that they literally wrap their connectors in the clear fishing line because it's not even if the connector breaks, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. Um, and you can't see it because it's clear. So you don't even know what's there. So, yeah. um, you know, always have that on you. Always, always, always. And then, That's interesting. you know, the biggest thing, too, is that this wasn't an issue years ago because connectors were a little bit more or, ornate and ordained and a little bit heavier and things like that. Now everybody wants these one strand, teeny tiny little thin things. And those things break so easy. You twist them, try to keep your, your suit flat, because if you twist those things, they will snap. They will they snap. Get, I see yeah. They it get all the time. time. Yes. I see it all the time. They don't stretch. They're metal. You know what right. I mean? And if you twist that little piece of metal, it's going to break in half, you know? So, and going to, to the question that came in about bikini bottom connector placement, a lot of times we're trying to pull them up and over the hips. So the that adds hip. tension. Yeah. That adds tension onto those, those straps, which they're not built to do that, especially when they're that thin, you know what I mean? And again, going back to girls are asking for these super thin, right? So you need to like safety protect yourself if that's what you want, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. I like the thin connectors too. I like the thin connectors Me too. too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think they're aesthetically pleasing across the board. So just make sure that you've got yourself wrapped up. I mean, like I said, I've got some girls who just do it out of precaution and yeah. then they don't, they don't worry about it. And that stress is off their head. You know what just I mean? Just take care of your suit, you know, after the show, just, wash it, lay yeah. off it like wash yeah. it immediately and then put it in a protecting case. And there's some girls that come in with their suit and it's like all bunch of bunch yeah. of like soft containers or no containers. And I'm like, yeah. oh gosh, these are really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of their stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. And simple things like you just said, washing it because that tan can eat away at the, at the suit the itself. Glue and the same. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so that's it. the first thing I do when I get home. Drew's like, yeah. Oh my God, you're always so on it. Like I literally fill the sink up hot water and I still put my suit in there while I'm yeah. unpacking. Like, I mean, how hard is that? You, know, you let it sit. Yeah. I saw somebody mention this on a, a board. This should never happen, by the way. Somebody was saying that they, they took their suit. It was a cheap suit. They took their suit and they soaked it to try to um, wash it and the stones all fell off. And I'm like, well, first of all, that should never happen. <laughs> I was like, that's the first thing. I said, you should be fine. Like, you should be able to soak your suit in lukewarm water with Rub your it. Suit. So, yes. And they should not, they should not move. So if they are, you, something's wrong with the suit. <laughs> <laughs> you need a new one anyway. So okay. one you know. company in particular, this happened to me too. And it was my second, second suit with that kind of company. And my first suit that I got from them was great. And then the second one that I got and I washed it for the first time and literally the stones were coming off in my hand. And I was like, I don't think this is supposed to happen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. Supposed and to it happen. stinks when you like, you know, you spend a lot of money on these suits and then, yeah, yeah but no, it's not supposed to happen. No, with my toxic suits, I can really do this. And yeah, same, yeah. same. I mean, I don't, I don't want you to do that because you scratch the crystals. So right. <laughs> don't do that. I'm just saying you could. <laughs> you could. Yeah. But don't. Um, but don't. <laughs> it's like I use a, a, toothbrush to, to get any kind of stain, uh, stains and tan out of the actual fabric, but you don't want to scrub the stones. So don't right. scrub the stones because just like anything else, if you get a diamond or whatever you should, you scrub them against each other, they're going to scratch. Scratch. So you don't want to do that. Um, you could, but don't. <laughs> so, um, so again, going back to the, the placement, it's really person dependent. Um, some people, we want them to hip straps really high. Some people we don't. In general, we don't want them low. We want them up and over the glute, up and over the hip bone. You want that connector to sit right in the curve from your glute into your hip and down into your waistline. So in general, that's where we want it to sit. Um, everybody's body is put together differently. Everybody's anatomy is a little different. So you have to adjust it. Some people have a higher hip on one side, a lower one on the other side, you know, things like that. So you have to adjust for those reasons. Um, but you definitely don't want it to cut off your glute or cut off the curves or anything like that. And again, going back to that's why a lot of these connectors have gone down to the single strand connectors versus the big thick ones we used to have. Like I, when I first started making suits, some of these connectors were dangly. Some of them had these big chunky things in them and none of them do that anymore. If you do that, you the railroad like you tracks. Yeah. 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 And those, those, la the latter ones, those ones were really, really popular for a long time. Um, and if you go back, 
if you have those, you're basically saying you competed 10 years ago. Is basically what you're saying when you have when you have those kinds of connectors on your suit. So just realize they're just, you know, something to figure out. It's a trend. I'm sure it'll change, trend. you know. Mm-hmm. It'll change just like it does every year. Like I said, I'm redesigning my suit bottoms now because we want to change it. Um, you know, things like that. We, we adjust with the times and the trends and what we see on stage and what the physique wants to display and things like that as well. So just, just remember that, that if you competed 10 years ago, you probably need, need a new suit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then the same thing with the tops. I see one of the mistakes that a lot of make with it, people make with the tops is they take the bo- the back of the strap and make it really low so it goes below mm-hmm. their their lats. That was popular when Issa was was the Olympia winner because she did that and showed that really wide lat flare that is no longer popular. That's yeah, no and they popular. they really really shortly after that Olympia shut that down because a lot yeah. of girls were starting to do that and they were like this is not what the look we're wanting so yeah it, it, it it's it it was confusing because obviously Issa won with that look and then girls started to do it and they were like no I don't want that much lat flare bring the suit back up close yeah. that arm a little bit more but we we curved it pretty quick mm-hmm. um yeah mm-hmm. but I start I see that too where girls have it like low really low versus just yep. putting it right where it should be yeah. And again, you see some of this stuff still in like European shows and things like that. Like I still see it every weekend yeah. when you're going to these European shows because they have, again, we're going back to the criteria. It just hasn't caught up to what we do here in the States. Right. So, you know, we've talked about that several times. Just is what it is. Just what it is. <laughs> so uh, before we get into the, the real topic for today. So where how are you doing with with your prep and everything going along? Oh, good. Yeah, we're we, we're on week three. Um I don't know. I check in with Jamie. I'm supposed to supposed to check in with Jamie on Fridays, but I'm seeing her today in person. So I didn't in person today. I'm the same weight as last week. Um, but I'm definitely feeling a lot leaner. Just uh it's got a lot going on with yeah. with work and stuff like that. So Yeah. Yeah. Well I got to see her in person at in Charlotte, which was nice. Um yeah. So I, I feel like, and that was the first time that I've seen a video. I was saying this is the first time I've seen a video where I was like, oh, my legs are actually dense now. They're actually thick enough. You know, yeah. I'm like, I, I've got, I've, I've, I've had the shape before. Like I look at my off season shape and I'm like, yeah, they've been like that, but they've not been thick enough. You know what I mean? There's a difference of that density. And I'm just like, oh, they actually look kind of thick right now. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, this is good. I like this. I was like, I'm sure she was happy with that too. Yeah. 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 Hopefully it'll stick around um, through prep and all that kind of stuff. I'm already feeling tired mm-hmm. and, and rounder and all that kind of stuff too, as I'm starting to kind of clean things up. You know what I mean? And um, Charlotte was tough. I didn't go to the bathroom the whole weekend. <laughs> really? Oh my God. It was rough. Uh, and that's kind of typical for me at shows. Um, but usually I can go at least once. I didn't go at all. Wow. That's so I frustrating too. Dying. Yeah. I'm dying. Yeah. That's so uncomfortable. Yeah. So Monday I got home and I'm just laying there. I, I'm like, cause we do our little fire pit every night and everything. And I'm sitting there at the fire pit and I'm like, I can't even sit up. Like I was like, I'm, I'm going to lay down and dance. Like I'm going to go make you a smooth move tea. He's like, you got it. He's like, you gotta do something. I was like, yeah. So he did that and it worked. But now it's like that. <laughs> it's like that, that, um, that cycle of, so I went nonstop you know, the next day, which was Tuesday. And then yesterday it's like, okay, you're backed up again. So I'm like, Oh, that Mm -hmm. I I do the revive GI shake. It's their greens, their fiber and glutamine. And I swear by that shake and prep because obviously the the low, the lower food gets food volume and fiber, then I get stopped up. Um, So like when I'm deep, deep in prep, I'll start doing that once a day. And I swear by that, especially with all the travel that we do, you know, it's just your body just doesn't, doesn't go normally you're out of routine and things like that so that i stick with me and the magnesium glycinate too i i love magnesium glycinate (laughs) so i I do the magnesium sometimes even jamie mentioned that in my check-in today and i was like i do it sometimes because it makes me go but it's the same process as the as the smooth moves i don't like to use it very often Mm -hmm. so um it's more for me it's more so the routine like my body is just good in a routine and like yep. when I went to Charlotte I got up at 5 a.m to drive which I normally don't get up until 7 30 8 o'clock you know so I got up early to drive then I drove for six hours so I was sitting for six hours you know what I mean and then by the time I got there I still couldn't go and then it just just compiled on top of that and I actually slept pretty decent the whole time I was there which was good I was That's surprised good. about that That's I, was surprised good. I, was like, I usually I can't pass out I passed out no problem um but it was still less sleep because I was getting up again at 5 a.m. You know what I mean? Yeah. So 
Well, and like you wake up and you're inundated right away. You have clients coming into your room, you're doing makeup, you don't have like your, you know, 20 minutes to drink your coffee. Sit and have your coffee and, and yep. go mm -hmm. and, you know, do your root slow routine. Um, that's why pe with people that travel a lot, you know, just finding what works for you, whatever that routine looks like, even though it's not your normal, you have to have like your travel normal and then like yeah. your, you know, at home yeah. normal. But yeah. I totally get it now because I told you last year at Tampa Pro, I woke up show morning with, with gut issues, like not yeah. being able to go to the bathroom. And I've never understood why girls get so angry when they can't go to the bathroom before stage. I'm like, don't get angry. It's fine. Like, just get on stage. Like, what? And then I was like, I am, why am I not going to the bathroom? I don't feel empty. Like, uh -huh. I get it now. Like, I get it. So that's where you just got to find what works for you as food starts to get lower, you know? Yeah. Well, well it was funny because again, going back to the show routine and being on a, like travel routine, typically I have that, but again, it was the first show for me really kind of traveling this year. And I, I like, I, I typically bring my, my um, French press with me. And I didn't do that. Mm. You know, I didn't bring my, didn't bring my normal supplements. I'm like, I didn't have the stuff I normally have. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, and, and when when uh, we started prep, it was supposed to be. So it was a few weeks ago. It, we were supposed to start prep the Friday of Clash, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I was already going to be in Orlando, and that's why, if you remember, I called and told JV on that Sunday before. I said, "Hey, I want to start prep today because I want a few days at home to try to figure out my routine, my supplements. Yes. Da, 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 da. That way, I have everything I need in Orlando versus trying to figure out when I'm on the road. So, yep. and that's that's something else too that you can always communicate to your coach. You know, like they want a week later or a week earlier, like tell them what's going to work best for you. So you can figure out your routine and what your needs are. Not when you're away from home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And that was the thing. I was like, that again, Charlotte was just when I threw on my, on my schedule, you know, two weeks prior, I didn't plan on doing it. So I, didn't I, I just didn't have everything put together like I normally do. And I was like, Oh, what is wrong with me right now? And oh, then, God. you know, like I said, when we got there, they didn't even let us check into the room until after three o'clock. Yeah. So that's crazy. I was like, I hate Ugh. that. So thankfully, I, and I went. Yeah, I went saw Jamie. Checked in. One of my other girls was already there. She'd already been there the day before. But the girl I was staying with had stayed at a different hotel. So she was checking in that day to the host hotel. So we couldn't get in to the room <laughs> until like three fifteen. Way later. Or something. And like finals that day because it was that was Saturday and finals was uh, was Saturday and Sunday for that. Five, show. right? Yeah. No, four. It was four o'clock. Oh. oh, so you literally had no time. No, got time. it. Yeah. No time. So yeah, I, that I sucks too. You don't have a chance to like get no. uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to do anything. I just, I was like, okay, I'm going to throw on different shoes or clothes. I went to my other girl's room and that's what I did. I threw on different clothes made, and exactly. It's exactly what I did. I just made sure I was presentable. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Show weekends, that's what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. And then like Sunday was a long day. Prejudging went until who? Almost. Pre judging did? Wow. Yes. Pre oh yeah, because MPC was after. That's right. Yeah, it was at least one, two o'clock, something like that. I stayed till almost the end because I had a I had a mass or I had a master's bikini girl that was in it, but I didn't stay till open. So I don't remember exactly what time they got off stage. And then again, finals was at three. Or I'm sorry, four. So it was like <laughs> It was literally, I sat down for like a half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other part of that too was like, you know, I had the, the VIP tickets to get up in front, but so I wanted to be there early. So I got there at like 3.15 to actually get in there and get the front row seat, you know, right. like before they let the general admission people in and all that kind of shit. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be the first one here. So that, that way I get my seat because I'm going live, <laughs> you know, like, it just, yeah. I just, you know, it is what Wanna it is. Want to be there, so, be ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got my, my front row middle every time. I was like, I got this. <laughs> Good segue into, we're going to talk about comparisons. Comparisons. Yes, I love it. All right. So let's, let's pull that up. So basically here's our, our topic for today, which is comparisons. We're going to, I'm going to pull up photos from NPC nationals this past year. So we always talk about how this sport, like I said, comparison is the thief of joy. But the problem is, is that when you're on stage, you're being compared. You know what I mean? So we thought we'd go through some of these comparison shots for you guys and kind of show you what makes the difference between these girls that are in first call out to second call out to third to fourth and so on and so forth. Um, I think that nationals is a good place to kind of do that because we have a lot of really good competitors. And then we have girls that, are, that probably should have waited a little bit longer to go to a national stage. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So um, nobody looks bad, but stretch of the imagination because they've all qualified to be there but there's a very big significant difference between your first call outs and between your last call outs in a class and there's a it, they're pretty big classes so um i was going to pull up i have nationals and then i was going to pull up um well it's going to show me my my windows it's not going to show me my windows that's fantastic good thing i can good thing i can edit this let me hide that because that's got to go away 
Okay, so this is our nationals list right here. So bring that down a little bit. So I, I'm going to bring up class C. Um, and we're just going to go through the comparisons, but I wanted you to see, first of all, so we've got, and I don't know, I don't know if you know any of these competitors, I actually don't, um, but at Nationals Top 2 GoPros, these top two girls actually did win their pro cards at this show. Um, so this is Tiffany, so I want you to be paying attention to the girl in the red when we when we pull up her, um, her comparisons. And then Faith was second, so she also won her pro card. Then third is Maya, Maya. I I pronounced that wrong. Uh, fourth, Victoria here. So I'm just kind of showing these pictures so you know who we're looking at once we pull up the actual comparisons. And then Lauren. So your top five right here. This is Lauren. Okay. So let's share. We got first call up right here. Yep, this is it right here. Okay, so this is our page for first call out. So I'm literally going to just click on the first picture and we're just going to work our way through once we get these up. So, Jordan, you let me know if you can see these pictures okay too, because I know on my end I can see them, but they may be a little bit pixelated or something for you. So, does that help if I go bigger? Yes. Okay. And can then if we it? get a little closer, if you can, if I'm if... not sure if it'll let me get any. Okay. More. I'm oh, trying to... oh, oh, that's good. That, that's that good. Help? Yep. Yep. Okay. Can you scroll? Can you just scroll up a little bit? Perfect. Right there. Good. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So this is your first call out. So we got what eight and first call out. This is typical. Usually it's a, you know, usually at most big shows, you're going to see eight girls in a call out. It's very rare that you're going to see an, an odd number. Um, they always want to give you an even number because they don't want to make it like, okay, the per person in the center is going to win kind of thing, right? So right. this is how they first came out on stage. So remember, if we're looking at this, the girl in the red all the way on the left, she ended up winning the class, right? So this is how she started in her in her position. Now, as they're doing this, they're going to turn them around and, and reposition them and all that kind of stuff. Now, before we go to the next slide, there's one thing specifically on this, on this particular shot that stands out to me. Um, do you see anything that specifically stands out to you? In a particular person or the yes. whole thing? Yeah, just in, 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 a, per, in a person. <laughs> I mean, the posing here yes. is wild. Yes, the, the posing right here. Yeah. Right here. Mm -hmm. So let's watch and see when we go through these comparisons and just see if that's her pose or if um, if it's if it's just a random shot. It could just be a random shot here. So let's just kind of click through. And of course, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go back to the small. See, she's still bent that way. So that is her pose. So let's go. I'm just going to click through until we get them moving. Right now, they're all still in their in their same spots. So I'm going to click through all the, the pictures. And once we get to them, them moving around, we'll stop it. Okay, so we're in a back pose here. So let's take a look at this one real quick. Can you see that one okay? Yep, just need a second to adjust once you're done moving it. Better? Okay, yep. Okay, so there's two people actually in this lineup that I'm looking at right now that, well, maybe three actually, that look a little bit overly conditioned. Can you tell who, the, who they are? Do you see them? Far right. Mm -hmm. Second one in from the right. And then purple three in from the left. Yep, exactly what I was exactly what I was thinking. They look like they're over the over the top when it comes to conditioning. Yep. So guys, so guys, when you're watching this, take a look at this. This, see if you can see that. Right. All the girls in this lineup again. This is first call out, so they're all going to be top. They're going to be top eight right here. But this is where the the judges start looking and saying, okay, is this girl, you know, in in the right condition? Is she over the line? Is she under? All those kinds of things. So. Um, Looking at the lineup, I don't see anybody that's out of condition in this particular front first call out, but I do see a couple, those three girls, the same ones you just said, that look like they're a little bit over, right? So there is such a thing as being too lean for bikini, for sure. So let's keep moving. And this is where we talk about people getting exposed, right? Because any one of those yes. girls, you know, in a room by themselves, they might have thought that they looked right on you know, yep. or conditioning wise, but it's really until you get next to the other girls where you start to see different fullnesses and conditioning that mm -hmm. 
just might fit the criteria a little bit better. And that's where you get exposed, you know, for this day on who shows up on this stage. That's right. And, you know, again, look, so here we start, we've started moving people. This looks like it's about where they landed as far as position wise for their placings. If you remember, we pulled up that top five. Um, So when I'm looking at this, I mean, the girl in the red stands out a lot to me in a good way meaning she looks really balanced from top to bottom. She looks very confident. Looks like she's just standing there and it's easy for her to just stand there. You know what I mean? It's not like she's trying too hard. Um, I noticed a few other things. What are some things that you notice here too? With the red suit? Um, just with her or with other girls on, on this particular call out. Is there anything I really like the blue suit. I love her fullness. I love her shape. I love this front pose on her. I think the blue suit really pops against her tan. My eye goes to the blue suit for my particular. This um, one right here or? The second place. Second place. Right. Oh, okay, 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 okay. No, gotcha. No, okay. no. So the one to the. Oh, oh, the teal. Got it. All yeah, right. Yes. Sorry, teal. Okay. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, other than that. I, I could see a lot of rib cage, but I see a lot of rib cage on all of them. So it's probably yeah. more of a lighting thing. Yeah. Um, just posing, you know, and this is kind of where you could see the the red suit and the teal suit, your first yeah. and second place winner, their poses look great. And everybody else mm-hmm. is kind of doing funky things within their posing. And that's where, you know, if you're going to get a pro card, you got to act like a pro, you know, like yep. you've got to be able to nail your front pose and your back pose without any kind of error. And a yep. lot of people can when they're by themselves, but then they start to not be able to hit those poses when they're on stage. And that's what I'm kind of seeing here is a lot of just, you know, angling issues and posing issues. And it's, it's probably throwing off what their shape really is. Absolutely. I agree with you. And, you know, the girl in the teal, she did win her pro card too. So what I look at when I look between the two of them, you're right. They both are standing there, just look like they're standing there, right? They're nice and full. They're round, all those kinds of things. I do see the rib cage that you're talking about with the red for sure. Um, what I see here is I see yanked uh, front pose. I see this pose is too thin. She needs to open up more. Um, this pose, she's bent over. This pose, she's up and open too much. Almost looks like she's figure. Um, Correct. I think I think if she kind of relaxed this pose a little bit, this would be a lot better. Um, now, these girls on the outside are a little difficult to tell because they're, they're angling they're angling to the judge. So I don't want to critique them too much because they're angling inward. So they, they could be right on. Just from our perspective here at the camera, we're not seeing what we what, what they are seeing at right. the judge's table. So, and they should be angling on yes, this. Yes, correct. They, they are they doing what they're supposed to. Yes, that's we're right. just unable Absolutely. to assess the physique because of the angle. Correct. Exactly. So, you know, I, I do think that um, actually this girl here in the in the purpley pink here, I think she probably has a much better physique than what she's showing, but she just looks so narrow with the way she's posing. Um, yeah. I think if she opened up, she's got some nice round, uh, you know, roundness in her legs and her shoulders and her glutes. Everything's nice and round, but she's just angled wrong. Um, and that's all in the pose. And I saw that actually in her individual um, pictures too. Her, she's just too she's just too closed off in her in her posing. So um, I find that happens a lot with girls with their poses because they think that that makes the waistline look smaller because they twist so hard to the side. Um, but in reality, it, it actually just diminishes your shape. Yeah, yeah. Make sure, and if you twist too much too, you make your waist look thicker for some yep. girls as well. So it's that just that very fine line of like finding that S curve, but not twisting so much that you're squaring the front glute or you know making your your waist look too wide and making yourself almost look too like narrow. Like you're going in between two planes of, of glass. You yep. want to be able to break the glass in your front pose a little bit. So. Yep. Now we're in the back pose. I'm going to open this up in a second, but I'm going to go to click through. Notice I'm clicking here and then here and then here. And it took until we got to this third photo for this girl in the purple to be in her, in her pose. She was the last one to settle into her pose. You don't want that in comparisons. You want to be the first one to settle into your pose, right? So you always want to be posed because what happens is, is the judge's eyes go right to you if you're still moving. And guess what? You're not fully set. You're probably not at your best. So you want to really pick up that speed when it comes to going through comparisons. Um, So what I see here is, sorry, just move that too much. There we go. it's kind of six and half, six in one hand, half a dozen the other when it comes to the red and the and the teal here when we're looking at the two of them, um, because I feel two like completely different physiques yeah, in this back pose. They really are. What I'm looking at with the red is I feel like she could be a little bit tighter and she could have a little bit more upper outer glute, but her balance between her legs and her glute is better than the girl in the teal. When we look at the teal, what I'm looking at is her legs. 
you know, um, she's got great fullness in her glutes. But I just think I just think that her pose is probably a little off. When you look at her toes, they're out a little bit, which is typically what you want to do. But maybe with her physique, she needs to move them a little bit. Um, or it could just this could just be where she looks her best too. We don't know. Maybe she just needs some more some more glutes added on to that. I actually think her conditioning is pretty good. I just think she's not posing it right. I think there's yeah. something a little off with that back pose. Both of them are narrowing up too at the top. You can tell mm -hmm. Red is up in her traps and uh, yes. pinching her shoulder blades back. So they probably could open up both of their lats a little bit more and create some some more dimension up top. Agreed. Um, and then teal, yeah. I mean, I definitely see like quad sweep here. So I would definitely play with like toes in and maybe opening the stance a little bit. Far right, honestly, is my favorite like look from top to bottom balance wise. She's just way too conditioned. Yes, I agree. Um, but I, I love like her lats are open, shoulders, rear I delts. Know. You can see it. Yep. And everything mm -hmm. looks so beautiful from top to bottom. She just needs a little bit more fullness. She's yep. a little too hard here. Yep. And you can see she maybe a little bit more upper outer glute kind of thing here. That would pop everything. Maybe she tilts a little bit more. Um, yep. But you're right. The conditioning. I actually think this girl in the pink, purpley here looks phenomenal. She's just posing wrong again. Just, yep. She's got she's to fix the posing. She's on. Yeah. Like, I, I, I think she could have potentially won this class if she posed right. I mean, yeah. I, I'm really seeing that fullness in her glutes. Her conditioning is right on. The shape, look at how small her waistline is back here. I mean, so small. She yeah. could she could have moved up for sure. Yeah. Um, A great example then, of, you know, having one of the best physiques on stage, but the posing is not showing that. So absolutely. controlling what you can control, this is something very easy. She could go back to the drawing board and come out early this season and hopefully snag her pro card. Yeah, absolutely. hundred um, percent. Now when we look at the two girls on the outside um, here, overconditioned, really clearly yeah. overconditioned. And I think because of that, she probably lost some of the volume in her, in her glutes. You glutes. know what I mean? Um, if she was a little bit fuller, those glutes would probably would have popped a little bit more. I don't think that her pose is necessarily bad. I just think she's too conditioned. Correct. Um, I love that girl, tan. Her color yeah. looks good with the purple color looks suit great. too. Hair yeah. looks good. Yeah. Yep. Um, the girl on the other side here, glutes are too big. I mean, it, this could be a posing thing, but I really think it's a, it's more of a, she needs a, probably do a bigger suit cut that would help, help cover some of that glute up. Um, and probably just needs to bring it down a little. She's just, she's just too big in comparison to everybody else. So this is where we talk about bikinis, a fine line, bikini is a fine line. You know, um, if she put on some more size, she has the genetic potential to go to wellness. She's not wellness, but she has the genetic potential to do it. She wanted um, to, right. If she wanted to correct. Yep. And then I think this girl here in the blue, she's posing too hard. As too well. wide, too yep. hard. Yep. Yep. She needs to stand up tall and bring those legs together a little bit. Cause it's just Less flattening arch. everything out. Yep. She's Less just arch. completely flattened. Um, can't really critique this girl right here because she's too far in the shadows. It looks like to me, she might be flexing her glutes a little bit, but I can't really tell to be honest. Hair looks a little too long too. Like I yeah. want to see her waist. I could tell her waist is nice and tiny and tight, but you can't see it with the hair that low. Yep, absolutely. So, you know, as you guys are watching this, we're hoping that you can kind of pick these things out and see these things and understand why the judges are moving people where they're moving them, right? So it becomes pretty clear once you start really diving into this and developing your eye. Let's move through and see if we can get to the second call out. I may just go back to the actual page because there's a lot of photos. <laughs> da, 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 da. So they turned them a few times. I don't think they walked them. They always walk them for the overall, but not. Okay, we here go. we go. We're, yeah, this is our second call out. So let's see if we go. I want to start with the front pose with them, not the back pose. Let's see if we can find a front pose first. And then we'll go to the back. Here we go. Let's go to, okay. I think everybody's pretty much posed here. Okay, so this is your second call out. So these are the girls that they still placed. Um, you know, this is your top 16, basically. Uh, but they, there was just little things that are off from them versus the first call out girls. Now, again, there's a few things that pop out to me right away. Um, what are some things that you see initially? Um, posing again, mm -hmm. um, so the girl, the girls that are splitting the box right now. So, uh, I think that's a purple suit and then the black suit. So purple suit covering her hand with her glue, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, her glue with her hand. We've talked yep. about that on our, um, what's not to do with posing. Mm -hmm. I also think that her backhand is a little too high. She has it in line with her Agreed. belly button right now and it's just kind of throwing off shape. And to me, she doesn't look settled in this pose right now. So that's either her front pose or she needed to adjust. I guess we'll see when we go through some photos. I think Black it is because I was just here. That is her front pose. So she hasn't okay. moved it. 
Okay. Yeah, the, it, she is settled into it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, black suit. Um, she looks great. She again posing. She's got mm -hmm. some S curve here, but she's kind of angling a little bit back from the judges. I think if she would have twisted a little bit more, um, and maybe not locking that that uh, standing leg out so much, she would have also given a little bit more bubbliness to the glute. Yep. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody Agreed. here, it's it's really just posing stuff. Um, yep. and just needing more, like you'll notice yes. now the glute structures, when we go from the middle to the outside in this call out, the, the, the glutes here are much less than what you were seeing in the first call out compared to the girls in the, even in the middle of the second call out, it gets less and less and less shoulders become less and less and less. So at this point it's just musculature. So I'm sure these girls are hearing it, maybe some sort of conditioning feedback and, or get back to work in the gym, bring the glutes up, bring the shoulders up, et cetera. Yeah. Cause I would say we haven't looked at their back shots yet, but everybody here looks like they're in shape. Like they yes. don't look like they're out of shape. And this is something that you're going to see at these bigger shows as well. You're going to see that the girls that are in shape are going to get the top call outs. If you're not in shape, you are going to be in the bottom call outs, regardless of everything else. You have to be in shape, period. So if you're in shape, you're going to be in the top. If you're not, you're going to be towards the bottom. So remember that. Um, agree with everything you just said. Lots of little presentation details, not just the posing too. Like when we're looking at this teal suit right here, it's all I see. All I see is these chest pieces on this on this bikini. It's too big on her. Um, over here, right next to her, this is too small. All I see is is chest. You know, so little things like that throw off your balance, right? Um, can't really see this girl over here because of the, the shadows, but she actually, I like her, her overall look when we're looking at tan and we're looking at her suit and things like that. Yeah. To me, this is one of the best ones in this, in this lineup. Um, I, I would also say like, there's, a, there's a few glam issues, like, like, like it's too light here. In the face. Yep. Too light here. Um, all those kinds of things. Like, and again, going back to what you're saying with the muscularity, like you can really tell most of these girls here need a little bit more. I would say, and again, this is an angle, so I can't tell. I would say she probably has enough muscle here, but I can't really tell. Can't tell. Same, same thing over here. It could just be the, the angle of the lens that we're looking at right now. This is why also judging when you're in person is a big deal. <laughs> um, and I would also say, like, I actually like the black suit on this girl. Like, typically, I'm not a huge fan of black. Like, I think it's just too much. But I actually like this look. Me too. Just, she, she looks like a just, little uh, mini Rossi. A little actor. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she just needs to fix her posing. Um, and I think she has more muscle than what she's showing because of her pose. You know what I, I mean? I think so, too. So Because you can um, see the glute you know. there. Let's go to the back yeah. shot. Let's see. Yep. Let's see if we can find a uh, back. Yeah, she's got enough. Got she's got enough size. She's got enough size. She can be tighter. She can yeah. be tighter from the back. Um, yeah. so I like red. Back. I like far left. She just needed to be a little I bit tighter. Too. That that was mm -hmm. where she was exposed. Yep, I do too. I like her. Um, let's see. All of these girls are close. You know, like they this are. is one more little off season for most of these girls up here. Mm -hmm. Like one more little off season coming back later on this year. Because remember, guys, the show was December of 2023. Yes. So about five months ago. So mm -hmm. if they've been working on their improvement season, most of these girls should be coming out later this year and trying to come back out again as long as they're putting on some a little bit more tissue. Yep. And this girl right here, pose is off. Um, also, needs more hair. Like you can really tell why you want hair down the back. People always talk about this in bikini. Your back is being judged. Your back is being judged. If you're exposing it, it's being judged. It's judged. <laughs> so um, the reason why you don't want your back to be judged is because women in general, we look thinner and leaner on the top half of our body than we do on the bottom. So automatically we look thin up here and not down here. That's why you need the hair. So it, it throws off the balance. If she had more hair down the back of here, what we would be focusing on is we'd be focusing on the shape into her shoulders. Now she still needs some more delts out here and things like that too. But because she doesn't have the hair down her back here, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at her, her, her scapula and everything sticking out. You know what I mean? I noticed too. I mean, I don't know if it's the photo, but her left shoulder is definitely higher than her right. Yeah. You know, And I might not have seen that as much if there was more hair, was hair. on the back. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, she needs more pelvic tilt. I actually, again, I think she's got a better frame than what she's showing, you know, going back to that. Um, this, it's funny because this girl in the front, I said she needed more size in the back. She needs to be better conditioned. She's got plenty of size in the back. She got plenty she's, of density. Yeah. Posing absolutely. too. She looks yep. like she's leaning forward a little she, bit. She's not opening up her back or her, her rear delts. 
Yeah, yep. she's just not showing the shape that she actually ha- I could tell she's got shoulders. You could tell because the, the mm-hmm. roundness of her shoulders on Absolutely. the side. No, so you just open up the lats a little bit more and maybe flare the elbows a tad would have been a whole whole different look. Yeah, absolutely. And then blonde on the end, I would go with a darker suit. That's the first thing. I would go with a darker tan. Um, I would fix that suit bottom back too because I think she needs she needs to show more glutes. I think like we were talking with the other girl that needs to cover them up a little bit. She needs to show more. She's squaring. Um, yeah, she's you know at the end of the day she needs a little bit less coverage in that back. Um, again, presentation. This is this comes down to little teeny tiny things when we're at this kind of level of competition. So. Um, let's keep going through this call out, go to the next one. But again, I mean, I love looking at these national shows because it's pretty clear. You can see the difference between first, second, and third call out and so on and so forth pretty, pretty easily. You know what I mean? Um, let's get to another call out. They kept them in that back pose a lot. They didn't really move them though. So that was it. Yeah. They moved, they moved this girl and this girl, and that was about it. Everybody else do the same. And if you're noticing too, while Sean's going through those, the inconsistencies in the front pose for all the girls. You have to be able to hit that same front pose every single time, same back pose every single time, because they could love this for the first front pose you give. And then the more they turn you and they're like, well, that didn't look the same. So it's right. just, it's just about really practicing and making sure you know what that front pose and back pose feels like so that when you're on stage, you know if it's wrong or right. I'm trying to get to a fully posed position for these girls. But this girl in the red keeps moving. <laughs> like every one of these shots, she's still moving. So, okay, there we go. This is our next call out down. Now, this is pretty clear why these girls are in this call out, right? Um, we have a lot of glam issues. We have a lot of tan issues. We have a lot of posing issues. Um, we have a lot of conditioning issues, all of those things. Um, you know, I don't want to point out every little detail here, but I think just from looking at the first two callouts, we can see why we're getting into the lower callouts right now. Right. Um, do you see anything that you wanted to specifically point out? Just, just the posing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a lot of, uh, my favorite in this call out is second one from the right. Uh, yes, the, the purple. The lamb, the purple, yeah. the tan. Agreed. Um, That front uh, toe turned all the way to the front in her front pose, I don't think is helping her with her glute. I think she's hiding some of her glute. And then this would Agreed. have been such a much balanced physique. Everybody else is just conditioning, too conditioned, uh, not enough muscle, definitely posing errors, a lot of rib cage, a lot of rib flare, a lot of like the hyper extension or the, you know, too much twisting or not twisting enough. Yes. Um, so these girls just need to get back to the drawing board of, you know, again, if you want to go pro, if you're showing up to a national show to get a pro card, we got to act like a professional. And part of that is knowing you're posing. That is That's your right. presentation. And if you are not able to hit a correct bikini front pose, you're not going to be getting a pro card that day, you know, right. unless, unless the physique is just that lights out compared to what is next to you on stage. Um, so again, just very simple, get back to the drawing board, hire a posing coach, work with your, you know, coach a little bit more on posing and, you know, just come back with some more fullness. A lot of these girls have good shape. It's just a little, little bit lacking in the upper body and glutes yep. here and, and things like that. So this is a great show for them to get on stage with a competitive class, see where they're lacking and get back to the drawing board. Don't waste any more time. Yep. And a lot of this for me, where my eye goes to is also, like I said, the glam, the hair and the makeup and the tan. I mean, it's just, it's off on, on, on pretty much everyone. It's off. Correct. You know, and whether they tried to save money and do it themselves or whatever it might be, this is not the place to do that because it definitely detracts. Like you can see like makeup's muddy, the the tan's not dark enough, you know, all those kinds of things. So those will absolutely push you down. If everybody else has it on, on, on point and you don't, yeah, it's just, you're out of luck, you know, um, let's go to keep going through. Let's see if they got a back pose here. I don't know if we we might've hit the back pose already. I think I went through to try to find the butt. There we go. Back pose. So, I mean, clearly it's mostly conditioning issues here. Right. And if you notice already, who is my favorite and where did she end up on the far left? Why? Because of this pose right here. She needs glutes. She needs glutes. She needs an upper body. Her tan and glam and everything to me is the best by far, but you see how much now she's exposed in this pose compared to the rest of the lineup. She needs, she just needs more muscle. Um, 
Yep. She needs to be, and she needs to be tighter. I mean, the the glaze is too much on her glutes. I mean, it looks shiny. There's a difference between being that, giving you that pop on the glutes and looking shiny. There's a difference. And we talked about this actually when I was wrapping up uh, Charlotte, when you put too much glaze on, it can make you look softer. So again, (laughs) again, fine tuned balance right there. Really, really fine tuned balance. Um, And again, there's a couple of girls in here that have a, we have pretty good potential as far as the shape is concerned. Like the, this girl right here, she's got really great potential from Huge, the back. Like, yeah. V taper. I mean, all of that. She just needs another layer of size. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. She looks, she's got Big great potential back here. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I would say even this redhead here, like she's, she just needs some more upper glute to pop everything up. I mean, she looks pretty good, you know, from the yep. front, I, I noticed her glam was really off. So that was a big deal. Her tan is muddy. Kind of muddy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it wasn't at the same time. You guys can see like this, there's a science to this. There's a rhyme or reason to all of this. Right. So, um, it's, it's not like we're just picking people out of thin air. There's, there's, there's criteria. So, um, let's go through. Let's see if there's, I think this is the, the last call out of the class, but I'm going to see if there's anything else. Oh no, this is last call out. Okay. So we got one more. So again, same things we talked about now here, we clearly can see conditioning issues. Everybody, everybody's conditioning issues, everybody's presentation issues, posing issues, same thing that we talked about before, but the biggest thing that pops out to me is they all look soft, every one of them. So anything else that pops out to you? Conditioning. Yep. Over across the board. Um, on the end here on the left actually has a really good shape. She's just not in shape. Mm. She has a really, she has a really good shape. So uh, again, conditioning, 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 size, you know, that kind of thing, posing, all the things we talked about before, but this is like one level notch below what we just saw in the call out before them. So again, it's, 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 it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear what we're looking at. And this is what the judges do all day long. You know, now I just noticed something. I don't know if you noticed this. Did you watch the girl in the yellow? Mm Mm-mm. So she's on a different side now. We were just talking about how being, you have to be consistent with your front pose. She went from one side to the other. Look at That's her wrong side because her buttons, yeah. well, her button's not on this side. Yeah. Interesting. And you can, I mean, she, I, I don't know if she just screwed up because this doesn't look very comfortable at all. You know what I mean? Yeah, she looks unsure. Yeah. I don't, I don't think she did that on purpose. That's her, that's her, that's her front side. pose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She probably nerves. Yeah. You know, again, going back to what we talked about, get in front of people and pose, get in front of people and pose. I mean, you can't, you can't simulate the show day experience other than getting in front of people and posing. <laughs> yeah. But practice everything, practice your individual, practice your front to back, practice yeah. your what, like practice everything, yep. everything. And listen, I'll be the first one to admit my final pro show and figure. I've never done this before in my entire career. And I turn the wrong way during quarter turns. So it happens to the best of us. Sometimes you do prepare across the board and shit happens. I yeah. was in that, I was in that mental space of, I know I'm not going to do figure anymore. I'm going to switch to bikini. So I just wasn't even, I was like, I'm done. And I've seen pictures and I'm turning the wrong way from everybody else on stage. So it, it just is what it is. So I, I'm, I'm guilty as well. Right. So, um, we've all been there. <laughs> I was like, I still look back at those photos. I'm laughing in the photos because I'm the wrong way from everybody else. <laughs> Makes you appreciate where you are now, though. Because from, <laughs> those, from those moments, you know, like how you need to structure your, your posing practice and you don't want to do that again. You know, that fuck, 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 fuck moment on yeah. stage. You know? yep. So it makes you go back to the drawing board and go, I never want to feel that way again. That's correct, because I definitely didn't want to do that. So I'm pretty sure this is our last call. And this was, as I said, this girl, to me, has a really great shape and they moved her in. We moved into the center. Same thing, scroll this too. Um, so that that girl uh, is now with Drew. She oh, really? hired, hired Drew after this show. Yep. So she's oh. coming out this year. Nice. Awesome. Well, I'm sure she'll be better. <laughs> she's an amazing athlete. <laughs> awesome. You can tell. I mean, she's got great muscle. She's got great shape. She's got a great look. She just wasn't yes. in shape for the show, basically. That's all. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, cool. Awesome. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do as far as this show is concerned is I wanted to pull up the overall comparisons just so you can see what they all looked like because these were the best girls um, of the day and they all won pro cards. So let's pull that up really quick. So every one of these girls, and again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull and we're gonna look at the front poses and back poses. We're not gonna really gonna go go through and critique as much, but just kind of so you can see the difference between some of the girls that that had everything on point, right? Um, so each one of these girls here won their pro card that day. They won their class. And when you're in the overall, then you compete for the overall. Um, 
So they all looked great. I mean, you can tell just by looking at them here. I mean, presentation's on point, hair makeup's on point, posing's on point for all of them. You know, there's you can make arguments as to who's your favorite, just like we do for the for the pros and everything at the pro shows and why somebody's got something over somebody else, that kind of thing. But nobody's off. Nobody's bad. You know what I mean? They're all pros now, right? Um, so I'm gonna click through. And we already what's uh, what's her name that won the overall? That is Maddie. Maddie. Maddie, yeah. She um she's on the end here, the blonde. She's gonna get moved in towards the center, but um she ends up winning the overall of this particular show. Um let's watch as we go through these. As we go through these photos too, you can see they're almost all in sync with their their turns, except this turns, one. timing, yep. 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 You gotta be careful of stuff like this because this really exposes you. You know what I mean? I try to tell girls, I'm like, always pose on this or go with the same side so that you're not doing this. Yeah. You can do, you can do this during your individual, but just don't do it during your um, Comparison. comparisons. Because then you get stuck because everybody else has already turned and you're not. So let's get them into a back pose. And they're still moving. So this girl here is still moving. This girl here is still moving. Everybody else is already already posed. So this is why we talk about speed. Again, now everybody is posed except for her. Okay, so speed is important. Um, you know, and just looking at this lineup here, you know, we talked about class C. This is the class C girl right here. And I would say of this lineup, she's probably the least conditioned, um, has the softest tie-ins. But like this girl right here needs some more, more glute in general, upper outer glute as well. This girl looks like she might be flexing her glutes a little bit. Um, she's squatting a little too much. She's got a little bit too much muscle um, conditioning and pop here. She's actually got really, really good shape. She just needs to pop more. Um, can't really tell with her on the outside here because she's always all the way on the outside. So let's wait and see if we can get her towards the center because she does end up winning the overall. Again, it's hard when you're looking at girls on the outside because of the angle of the, the camera. So let's get them moved. I probably yep, they're moving her in now. Okay, so now we got her towards the center here. The one thing I would say is just to relax the arm. It's still hanging out out there. So I was like, maybe she's in between, but she's not. She just relax the arm down. That'll brown the shoulder out a little bit more. Um, the tan on this girl, too, I'm not a big fan. It's, like, muddy. Get into the back again now that we've got her in the center. <clears throat> and she just made her pro debut, too. She did. First call out? Yep. Okay. So... Let's see what I would say here is she needs to tilt a little bit more and relax the elbows. Would you agree? Yep. But, and um, Maddie does have scoliosis. You can kind okay. of tell here. She's got a left shoulder higher than the right shoulder. When she's like on and she's thinking about it, she's very good at elevating that right shoulder to bring them up nice and level. But that's what you do see in the back pose. She does have scoliosis. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. Yeah. To me, Maddie has everything. You know, Agreed. are there flaws in this physique? Of course there are. There's a, there, yeah. We all have uh, uh, holes in our physique, but from mm -hmm. the tan to the makeup to the overall uh, presentation from top to bottom, balance top to bottom in yeah. this lineup, Agreed. she's got it all. So Agreed. Uh, that's, to me, she's, she was the clear winner here. Yeah. And I'm even looking at the girl that's next to her here. You can see the tanning issues even on her hamstrings in these photos. You know what I mean? You yeah. got to remember, the, we're, we're looking at photos from way out here. The judges are right up on them. So they see all of this like real time right in front of their face. Right. So, yeah. And, you know, and, and photos too make make the girls look a little bit harder than they are. So yeah. like Maddie to me looks super sharp here in, these, yeah, in the tie-ins. And I could still see even some, some hamstrings, but she probably wasn't this sharp in person. Yeah. Um, but again, I for this lineup, the sharpness is better than the other options in yeah. terms of shape and overall presentation. So that is the winning look. Well, and even with that sharpness in the hamstring, she's still got more pop with her glutes than everybody else in this lineup. Right. You know, so even full, though full, she's full. yeah, even though she's lean, she's full. 
Yep. And that's, that's the difference right there. It's like some of these girls could be a little bit tighter and then some of these girls could just have a little bit more pop and density coming at you, projection coming at you. So the fact she's got both is what pushes her over the edge yep. really. So, but yeah, so cool. Awesome. So I'm going to get rid of this. So anything else that you wanted to kind of just recap on that at all? Just, it's pretty easy to see that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, why we brought this up is because a lot of people, you know, after they get through a show, they might not understand the placing, which as an amateur, we don't expect you to, right? But right. that's where you, that's why you need to stay for feedback and talk to the judges and, mm -hmm. you know, talk to your coach on Sunday, Monday and go through the photos together so you can mm -hmm. see. You know, because you could take the any one of those girls in the in the original call out or top five could go to another show on another weekend with a little bit of a more conditioning or a little bit of a better tan and get into a higher placing in an right. pro or earn a pro card that day based off of the changes that they were able to make and or the girls that show up to that stage. It mm -hmm. truly just depends. You know, the judges have to score that day what is in front of them. Right. Um, so you know, that's where in this sport I you know, it, it's easier said than done, develop thick skin because it is, yeah. it is a sport about continuous feedback and continuous constructive criticism of things that you have to change. And you have to be ready for that. Um, especially if you're new to the sport, getting your first pro card, your first or second national show is not the normal. Does it happen? Yeah. Of course it does. Of course it does for genetic mm -hmm. girls and genetic freaks or girls that have been, you know, training for a while. Now all of a sudden they're just you know, stepping on stage, it does happen, but it's not the normal. Right. And in this day and age, we are so used to getting what we want when we want it. But this sport is a game of chess and a game mm -hmm. of patience. And um, it's not, you're going to be very sorely disappointed if you feel like you're going to move up in the ranks that quickly. Yeah. Um, so just, just give yourself th that time and study your sport. This is what Sean and I do yeah. every weekend after a show weekend we go yeah. back we look at the photos if we're not there in person as coaches because we want to know what they're picking what was picked on stage that day and how to bring our athletes in and that's how we try to develop as coaches but you should be doing the same as an athlete yes and again you know you also saw how we went through all of these photos and we went through and we still we still gave caveats of we're not there in person and we can't see what the girls on the outside really look like and things like that so when you as a competitor are looking at one or two shots from your show and saying well i look better than her in this picture remember the judges saw you in every picture and everything that was not captured on film like we talked about with that overall the girl that turned the wrong way with it with the comparison shots the judges saw that right, right? So you have to remember that something that simple could be the reason why you end up in third and somebody else beats you, you know, that right. kind of thing. So, you know, don't cherry pick photos that make you look better than everybody else because it wasn't, that wasn't what the judges saw. The judges saw all of it. They saw all of it. And remember it's a full package. I mean, you even heard us saying as you're we going through this, we're talking about their conditioning and when you saw the purple girl from the front, you liked her. We turned her to the back and realized her conditioning is off. You know what I mean? So like there's, there's, there's things that you don't see if you don't compare the entire thing versus Absolutely. saying, I, I look great in this photo. Yeah. You look great by yourself, right? You, you look fantastic by yourself, but you got to remember, you've got to be next to everybody else. And the judges are picking the entire package. They're not picking just, you know, this girl, like we talked about the, that class C, you liked the girl in the teal. And then when we turned to the back, we realized her legs are a little bit overpowering. So understand why she ended up in that second place versus the third place, first place. You know, those are the things that the judges see. You know, and that's why studying this sport is important because then when you go to do this, you can understand why somebody beats you or you beat them. You know, be like, oh, I, I get it now. I understand. And I would also encourage you if you are a competitor to not post those things with specific verbiage, making it sound like you should have won and that other person should have lost. So I see that a lot. Um, and I don't think that girls really, really mean to do it that way. I don't think it, it's, it's necessarily coming off as, as destructive, think, that kind of thing. But you got to remember that if those girls see this photo and see how you're captioning it and things like that, they worked just as hard as you did. Yeah. You know? So yeah. Be, be kind. And you're taken away from the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. You know, so I, I get it can, it hurts sometimes because like you, you put a lot of effort into this and I understand that, but so did they, you know, put yourself into their shoes and say, well, you know, I, I, you know, I don't understand why, you know, the, why I have my placing. Can somebody tell me why my placing is this way versus saying, I don't understand why this girl beat me. There, right. There's a difference. There's yeah. a difference. <laughs> you know, there, there's, there, there's two ways. It's not, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. Right. 
So remember, always remember when you're po posting things that those people have feelings too. You know, those people put themselves out there to be judged just like you did. Um, so remember that, that because the, they could see that it could take away from their joy. You know what I mean? So absolutely. just watch your sense with that too, because I see it a lot. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's natural to be hurt. It's okay. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's okay to be hurt, to not get the place in that you think that you should, that you should have gotten and things like that. Just don't blast it out there on social media like that. You know, yeah. go to the judges, go to your coach, find out what you got to do better, all those kinds of things. But realize it's not a you versus them kind of thing. It's a you versus you and a you versus the criteria kind of thing, you know? Definitely. So just, just my, just my two cents right there. So. <laughs> Love it. Great way to finish that. I was going to say, that's a, that's a perfect way to end. I, I know this was kind of a, uh, out of order kind of podcast. We did the, we did the question ahead of time, but Hey, that's all right. We got more questions for next it's week. It's our we podcast. We can reorder if we that's want. That's right. It's our podcast. We can do what we want. <laughs> Switching it up a little bit. I know. I know I've got a busy day ahead. I'm sure you do too. Um, these 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 weekends are weekends, weeks to into weekends. Like Thursday, when I get to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's just non nonstop. It's just nonstop. So um with that, we'll kind of we'll kind of sign out for today. Um, are you home you're home this weekend or are you going to a show this weekend? I'm home. I'm home this okay. weekend. Yep. Me too. Me too. Yep. Yep. So I have a group class this weekend, got clients all week. People are getting, people are getting back up on stages now. So the, 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 the schedule is in. Season has begun. <laughs> that the sure has. So with that, you guys, thank you so much again for following along with us and listening. And hopefully you learned something a little bit here today. This is episode 33. So go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, share all of the fun things. And we will see you back here again next week for episode 34. Bye. Bye.